one thing you told me when we were catching up and talking about doing this show yep. is that you didn't want to say the same stories that you've told many times over the years. You and I have had such a unique experience beyond that mm -hmm. in our little niche of the wrestling world up here in New Jersey that I thought, you know what? I'd love to pick your brain about the old WWWF days with Gorilla Monsoon and your interactions with him. Obviously, WCW, you were there at a very interesting time. Yep and everything in between. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to start, as opposed to everyone else covering those sort of areas, with what you did after WCW. Because I remember when we got acquainted, you were telling me about how you had left. This was just when Hulk Hogan was coming in, as I like to call it, Hogan and Friends. Yep. And all of his regime was basically taken over. And Dave Penzer took over for you in the announcing spot? Yes, he did. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you want your promotion to take off and I'm working with you, fire me. <laughs> <laughs> because I left WWF and then all of a sudden Hulkamania happened. I left in May of 1995 WCW and in September Nitro happened. <laughs> so, you know, if you, if you want to fail, hire me. And then... Fire me and then you'll zoom. You'll zoom to new heights. Basically, the theme is like you leave, Hogan comes in <laughs> and then rides the wave. Yeah. Well, we overlapped in WCW, but it was funny because at the end of my WCW term, um, they wanted me to come in for one more show past my contract and I, we didn't come to terms, so I didn't do it. And then in June of that year, I get a call from the WCW offices from someone um, who worked in the office and called me in a whisper and said, uh, Gary, Gary, I just want you to know something big's going on. They're going to start something big in the fall. And if you want to get included in it, you need to call Eric. <laughs> and he was referring to Nitro. Right. I had no idea what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. And he probably didn't know either. He was he just heard. Uh, something was happening and I just said to him well Eric has my number so if he wants me to you know to work with him which I you know what I probably would have turned him down but nevertheless if he wants to you know if he wants me to work with him then he can call me I when you're in a negotiating situation you don't want to come asking for work mm -hmm. you're always then at immediately at, um, at a negative do you want to be the one who's desired the one who's wanted for a position right because mm -hmm. uh, when you're negotiating a deal, that's always a, a position of strength. Dave Penzer basically took over for you. And I was thinking, you've said on many shows how when you were announcing back in the day for the WWF that Vince Jr. <laughs> never acknowledged you. He wouldn't say your name. Yes. And you did have some TV time for getting your face on TV with uh, Jimmy Snuka and George the Animal Steel and other heels that would pick on you. Yep. And... Later on, you would be seen in the ring in AWA in Atlantic City, announcing their TV shows, and Stan Hansen's behind you, and this and that. And then later on, of course, WCW. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you would be in the ring. We'd have a nice close-up of you sometimes, announcing the next match or the main event or whatever. However, when Nitro started, I don't think we ever saw Dave Penzer in the ring. Do you think that was a similar sort of feeling like uh, Vince yeah. Jr. where the announcer doesn't matter? Yes, because Eric was trying to imitate Vinny. And before I left WCW, at the first TV tapings over which um, Eric presided, he pulled me to the side and he said, Garrett, he said, what I'd like for you to do is to just speed up your announcements a little bit. Mm -hmm. He never said to me, we're going to try to ignore you. Which I would have appreciated. I mean, I, I, I could have taken it. That would be okay. Right. It's like we're, we're going to put less emphasis on the ring announcer. But he never said that. All he said was, we're going to you know speed things up. Actually, when I was with the AWA on ESPN, we used to um, pass off to each other by name. You know, and now down to Doug McLeod, who was the, the commentator at the time. And let's go up to the ring and Gary Michael Capetta. Right. And Jim Ross was always great with that. Um, because it makes you appear because you are part of the team. Right. As opposed to this annoying person who's coming in to announce what we already know. Mm -hmm. Eric did that when I was there my last year. Um, you'll notice the last several months of my WCW syndicated shows, you don't see me either. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not mentioned and don't do any interviews and nothing. 
That's a shame because when we first started working together, I remember telling my buddy Lawrence, who's been on the show, he grew up a WCW fan. Mm -hmm. And this was before YouTube. And I was still trying to collect as many VHS tapes as I could. I got really into WCW with uh, the Monday Night War time with the NWO and Nitro and everything like that. And I did have a whole bunch of older WCW tapes and everything, but I wasn't quite as familiar with you as I would become. And when I told him that I was going to start working with you or you were coming to the library where I worked, he said, oh, that's this is Sting. And yep. I'm like, oh, yeah. You had a very distinctive announcing voice. So it's a shame that it wasn't featured some more in that respect. Yeah. you A ring announcer has a very short window to be noticed. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm the best when I'm not noticed. When you're into, you're watching an entrance and the voice that's introducing the wrestler that's approaching the ring is making you more tense, more excited, more feeling something. To emphasize the moment. Right. And mm -hmm. it's not until later when the fan looks back to appreciate that voice. Mm -hmm. Then I'm doing my job. Everybody likes to be acknowledged. Sure. You know, here and there. And WCW was great with that. And it just could have been that Eric just didn't like my work. Mm -hmm. I mean, that I that's possible too.